Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a super awesome day. I'm having fun in Luminar today. I'm in Luminar Flex. Uh, it'll work the same in Luminar 3. It'll work the same in Luminar 2018. Um, and frankly, this uh, little thing I'm going to show you will work the same in Luminar 4. Uh, so what this is, is um, you've seen me do videos in the past about replacing a sky, like a oh, boring sky. Let's put a new one on there. And I had different ways I did that in Luminar 3 and Luminar Flex, Luminar 2018. As you know, uh, you can see my video if you don't know, but Luminar 4 is going to make sky replacement super easy, like click, click, hey, I'm done. Wow, that looks good. Um, and I'm excited about that, and I suspect you are too. Um, but, um, you know, what, what we haven't really talked about is what if you're okay with the sky and you're okay with the, you know, the, the subject, but the foreground sucks. So basically, this is not a sky replacement. This is a foreground replacement. It's the same idea. You're just swapping out a part of the scene and uh, you're replacing it with a better part of the scene. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's my base photo. This was shot in London a couple of years ago. I took a couple of exposures here. This was a quick snap, if you will, kind of dark, looking across the River Thames uh, at, you know, blue hour-ish. Um, and uh, there's the shard, blah, 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 right? So I like the idea of the photo. Um, it's okay. It's kind of boring. But um, I just take a lot of photos. So I took that and I was like, yeah, I kind of like that. Oh, you know what I should do? I should do a long exposure. That'll look so much better. You know, the water be smooth, the clouds, whatever. And so I said, yeah, I'll do that. I'll take a long exposure. So next photo, here's my long exposure. Hey, can you tell uh, Jim screwed that long exposure up? It's not clear. Um, I, I, I don't remember, to be honest, but I was looking through these uh, through my library and saw this photo and I was like, ooh, long exposure, I'll edit that. So I got it and started playing with it and I was like, wait a minute, that's soft. Um, that is really soft. So if you saw the first one, which you did a minute ago, uh, let me go back to that. Here we go, if I zoom in, this is crisp, right? So the buildings look great, uh, you know, the shard looks great, blah, 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 everything looks cool. Um, but the foreground's boring. So this next one, if I can get that to work, there we go. Um, the foreground is better because it's a long exposure and you're thinking, Jim, the photo's blurry. The photo is blurry, but guess what? I don't really care because a long exposure of the water is blurry water. So it's kind of the same thing. Let me show you another thing though. The photos don't line up. I didn't shoot them exactly the same. So there's uh, the long exposure, right? You can see it's a little bit crooked compared to the uh, quick or short exposure. So I'm gonna blend these together. I'm gonna stick that bottom on that top and I'm gonna come up with that. So I'm taking the foreground, I cropped it too as you can tell, but I'm taking the foreground from the long exposure, even though it's blurry, it doesn't matter. Again, um, uh, you don't need to worry about the blur there because it's a long exposure. Um, situations you can use this in, if you've got a photo of some place and there's a sidewalk, um, and maybe you've got some uh, grass from, uh, or a street, I should say, and a sidewalk, and you've got grass or a field that would look a lot better, you could stick that in front of whatever your subject is. Um, if you've got um, a picture of something in a field, but the field is brown, dead grass from the fall, and you really want, like, uh, you've got a springtime photo of a field with flowers, you could stick the, uh, the flower field in front of whatever the photo is and replace the... Uh, the, the meadow, if you will, or whatever. You know what I'm saying. So those are the kind of things you can do. Let me go get Luminar, and here we go. So how do you do it? So you just stack the exposures, right? I've got my base exposure, and I'm gonna go say plus, add new image layer, and I'm gonna get, that's the one, open, and it's gonna lay on top as a new image layer. Hey, Jim, it's crooked. I know it's crooked. We don't really care, um, because I'm, it, it, let me, I should say, I got lucky, to be honest, um, that I can even do this, and that's because um, it's it's pretty close to being the same scene, and to be honest, I don't have to be exact here. It's better if you're exact. This is not the perfect example. I kind of got lucky to have this example, um, but it's not perfect because it's not lined up. So, in other words, I recommend you make sure they line up if you're shooting a long and a short exposure of the same scene. Um, if you're placing some other scene in there, then don't worry about it, right? So, okay, what do you do? Um, well, if I turn off this layer, you, that's my base layer you see now because my top layer is a long exposure. And that's what I like to do. I like to have whatever my primary photo look is gonna be on the bottom. And then the stuff I'm blending in, I like to stick on top. So often that would be a new sky, but in this case, 
it's a new bottom. So what do you do? I'm just gonna grab the gradient mask, and as you can see, it says click and drag to gr draw gradient, if I could talk. And all I'm gonna do is come in here, and I'm gonna drag this gradient, and I'm gonna do something about like that. And as you probably know, there's a gradient zone, and this is not a tutorial on the gradient mask. I do have those if you wanna look, but you can turn this, just uh, you know, straighten it or make it crooked, and you can move this up and down, and you can use those two bars to compress the zone. Now, we're talking about moving water, um, and I've got the majority of that foreground now in place. What I need to be careful with, and I don't know how well I'm gonna do, when I took my time and wasn't recording a video, I got it pretty well uh, executed in that sample photo I showed you, but if you can't tell, there are boats here that are across the river. In the long exposure, they're a bouncy mess. Um, not to mention the fact that the photo is blurred, so they're blurry plus they're a long exposure blur. So it's like a double whammy of blurry screwiness. Um, so you gotta be really careful. I'm trying to get it. Uh, I don't know how well I'm gonna do in this video, but we're gonna say something like that. But all you're trying to do is line up that horizon and the gradient mask is only gonna work if you have a flat horizon. So if you have a field with a hard stop of where you need to blend in those flowers or that grass, gradient mask will work great. If not, I recommend using a brush mask. But I think, you know, that's pretty good, right? It's not perfect. Um, I could futz around with it, but you're not really here to watch Jim futz around. So what have I done? I've taken that bottom, just look at the bottom of the photo, and turned it into that. And I can already see I missed a little bit because the boats are moving. We're all friends here and you're gonna say, Jim, don't worry about that. I forgive you because you're in a hurry because you're recording a video. So thanks for that, I appreciate it. So tools, I'm gonna go to crop. I'm gonna get my 16 by nine. I don't know if you noticed, there's some old pylons and stuff here. Um, I don't really care. Um, they're not really blurry or screwed up, but I'm gonna crop them out anyway. And I think the photo is pretty straight. The shard looks pretty straight, city hall, looks pretty straight there in London. So I'm gonna say done, and there's my blend. That's really how you do it. Now, to get to my final result, I added a new adjustment layer and stuck a bunch of filters. So I'm gonna go get those and stick them on here. But I recommend doing that, especially if you didn't shoot them uh, at the exact same time with different exposure lengths, you're gonna, make sh you're gonna need to make sure that you're blending um, them together well, and then on top of that, adding a new adjustment layer and making adjustments to light and tone and that sort of thing, because you want them to look like they belong together. In this case, they're the basically the same exposure uh, value, right, in terms of both being fairly dark. Um, so I don't really need to worry too much about blending the light of the bottom and the top. I wanna improve the light across the whole image, and that's what I'm gonna do now. So add filter. Uh, I got Accent AI, and then I got, I'm just gonna go grab these, Brilliance and Warmth. I got Cross Processing. Man, I like Cross Processing. I got Tone, one of my favorite filters, and I got Split Toning, and that's it, really. So just a few filters here. I gotta look at my notes, so you're gonna forgive me while I do that. I went Accent AI of 42, 42, there it is. And if you're not using that filter, like you're missing out. It's, uh, it's like the easy button. I love that filter. I mean, just look at that difference, boom. To boom, it looks so much better, right? Uh, brilliance and warmth, I'm gonna go 35 here. Yeah, look at those colors, baby. Oh man, I love my colors. Uh, and I'm gonna go like 51 here, I think. Yep, that looks good. Uh, cross processing, I used Tokyo and I used it at 36. Uh, so as you can see, it gave a little bit of a blue. And already, I mean, in three filters, now, uh, that was only a few seconds of work, but that's because I already knew what I was doing. Uh, but in reality, even just using those three filters, we're only talking about a couple of minutes. I mean, it's not like I, I didn't spend probably more than 10 or 15 minutes. After I blended it together, I didn't spend probably more than 10 or 15 getting the filters and getting them looking right. But I mean, it already looks way better. Uh, tone, I actually bumped the exposure a tiny bit. So um, something like that, let's say. Uh, brighten it up, add some contrast. I think that's about right. Um, smart tone. Man, I love smart tone. That's so awesome. Something like, I think it was 22. I gotta look at my notes. Yep, and then the highlights came down. Uh, whoops, not that much. Uh, something about like that. So, you know, tone made a nice difference. Balancing it, you know, despite the fact that I'd done Accent AI, which significantly brightened the picture. Let me show you. That's before, and that's with Accent AI. Adding tone and that smart tone and that exposure bump made a huge difference. And so it took what looked like a almost, not quite nighttime, but like a really dark, late 
um, you know, getting into blue hour kind of shot. And now it looks like it's right at sunset. Um, so, you know, it looks a lot better. Now, there's no sunset color really, but it's London, so you may not get a lot of that. Uh, split toning, let me do that real quick. I went to, whoa, I'm moving a little fast here. Uh, let's say 29 and about a 30 on the saturation. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I've got tutorials on split toning if you haven't used it. Separate highlights from shadows, pick a color and a saturation level, force highlights separately from shadows, and go to town. And you get your colors looking so sweet. So I'm gonna go hue at about 30, 35. Uh, let's see here, something like that. And I'm gonna give it a little kick of color there. Um, I don't think that's actually what I did in my initial one, but anyway. That's basically it for the edit. Let me turn off this layer and show you where we started. We started with a dark, dark photo that lacked color and the building lights, which were on mostly, were looking like crap. Um, now the building lights are much more vibrant. The sky is much more vibrant. The, the colors are way better to my eye. You may not like them, that's okay. Uh, and not to mention we replaced the foreground, which is really the point of this video. Even though I get to talk in and having fun here, hanging out with you guys and just start yapping. Um, you can kind of tell that boat's moving. Oh, let me zoom in and show you um, what I'm talking about. You can see I got kind of two boats there, right? So that's what I'm saying. You got to be really careful blending it in. Um, but far enough out, you can't really tell. But the way I blended it this time, because I'm doing it live, I got a little too much of, uh, I didn't quite get the horizon just right. And it's hard to do. So I totally recommend that you take your time, zoom in and do it slow because otherwise, You'll get a fuzzy blend like I just got, but the point is not how accurate was Jim's blend. The point is you can do a blend and put a new foreground on instead of a new sky because frankly, like I like that sky and the long exposure sky, there weren't enough clouds or cloud movement to make these amazingly awesome streaks to where I really needed that sky. Um, and if that's the case, I'd have to do a sky replacement, but um, in this case, um, I think the sky was just fine and the upper half of the photo was fine from the shoreline and up. It was the bottom half that was just a big yawn to me, like that choppy water stuff I just don't like. Um, and so I wanted the long exposure and, I, and then I had one. I was like, ooh, I'm going to edit that one, as I said. And then when I looked at it, I was like, well, shit, um, it's, uh, it's blurry because I screwed something up. I must have hit the camera. I don't know. I don't remember because it's been a couple of years. However. The water looks fine. It goes fine here. And I was able to go from zero to, you know, not a hero, but certainly from nothing to something um, worth having. And in fact, I saved a shot, right? I actually took advantage of a long exposure despite the fact that it was blurred. The, the subject matter was blurred. The water, um, which frankly is the subject matter in a long exposure for me in that case, I was able to save that even from a slightly off-center photo that didn't align with this one. I am still able to use that foreground, stick it on another foreground on the same spot and go from kind of ho-hum to, you know, something I get a little bit more excited about. And that's how it works. Easy, it's just about adding a new image layer and blending it in with a mask of some sort. I use the gradient mask. You just gotta be careful. It actually might've been better for me to do a gradient mask up until the bottom of those boats and then come in with the brush, zoom in, you can do that, you can mix the mask, uh, and then come in and paint it in the rest of the way by hand with the uh, with the brush mask. Probably a better idea, but that's something that you can try on your own if you like. And that's it, friends. I'm gonna shut up, give you your day back. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Luminar 4 is coming soonish, I think next month. Uh, I got more stuff to talk about about that, and uh, I'll see you soon. So I appreciate you watching and tuning in. Hope you're having a super awesome day. See you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.